Are you being hoovered? What is hoovering? And I have an action plan to help you deal with it, if in fact that's what's going on. Hoovering is when you have had a relationship with someone who is fairly far along or very far along on the narcissistic spectrum of behaviors, a drama king, a drama queen, a crazy maker, which all narcissists tend to be overall crazy makers because of their unpredictability, because of their lack of empathy, because of their excessive degree of charm in the beginning, and then usually their predictable pattern of using, abusing, and discarding people. Hoovering is when they've run out, basically, of their current narcissistic battery charger supply of people in their lives, and they are either lining up or they are hunting, really, for someone who they can count on to give them the attention and hopefully the affection, the adulation, maybe the financial um, help, maybe a place to live, maybe a job recommendation. It can take many forms, but the point is, even if you haven't heard from them in 10, 20, 30, 50 years, they will hunt you down. If it takes them five hours on the internet to find your name, address, and phone number, they'll do the research if they're desperate enough for the attention, for the connection. Sometimes it's a person who you've just been with and, and are no longer involved with, and it's a shorter period of time. Maybe they're local. Maybe it's somebody who you've known at work where there's been a falling out, and now you've thought You've moved on, you're over it, and they come back, and they want to rekindle things. That's hoovering, like a vacuum cleaner that goes over the same spot again and again and again, looking to clean up the dirt. Well, in this case, they're not looking to clean up dirt because you are anything but that. They're looking to get you to be the gold mine. They're mining for gold in terms of giving them attention. A narcissist feeds on people's attention and adulation and, and they get uplifted by it. And when they don't have it, since they're constantly needing to look outside of themselves for a sense of self-worth, like people who are addicted to something as compelling as heroin or cocaine, they'll say or do anything to persuade you to let them back into your heart, into your life, and maybe into your home. Please, 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 the decision is always yours ultimately, of course, and I would strongly advise you to be very hesitant of hoovering. Really listen to what they're saying. If you see them, really watch what they're doing. <clears throat> Don't let yourself be charmed as you initially were maybe years before. Let me give you an action plan, a very simple one, to identify whether or not the person has truly changed and is safe at all for you to allow into your life again. Golden nuggets, I like to call them, of insight gleaned from my 30 plus years as an intuitive as a life and relationship coach who has worked with many people who are recovering from the terrible abuse, the disappointment, the disillusionment of having been involved with people who have these, these problems. Golden nugget number one for today, from my heart, right to yours, that I'd love to share with you. It is a red flag if you hear them talking about all the awful things that have happened to them since they've been away from you and they say something to the effect, how did I ever live without you? I'm so glad you're back in my life, etc., etc., etc. Golden nugget number two. It's another red flag if they want instant intimacy with you, if they rush you and push you into making any sort of a commitment to letting them back into your heart, into your bed, into your uh, business affairs, into your family. 
Next golden nugget, go slowly. If you feel guided to spend any time with them at all, let it be very time limited. Be clear on your boundaries. What are you willing and not willing to do? The next golden nugget is be sure that if you do say no to them, they don't react the way they most likely did when you were involved years before or however many months before by turning on you, by accusing you, by implying that you're a, a, a callous individual who has no sense of caring for others. Otherwise, you'd know how much they've been through and you'd be uh, in their corner 100,000%, etc., etc., etc. And the next and last golden nugget for today, in the privacy of your own contemplative time, please be still or journal or talk to a coach, pray, ask for guidance internally, go to that place within you where all the answers reside, and ask yourself, what else is possible for your life? Are you in a vulnerable state right now where having all this attention that they are so good at lavishing on you at first appeals to you? Ask yourself, how can I give myself the attention, the love, the affection that may be there promising? Because remember, an empty promise from somebody who's hurt you in the past, who's disappointed you in the past, who's shown that they had no real integrity in the past, is not very likely to prove to be a good bet in the present or in the future. I'm Beverly Banner Brown. I hope that this will help you to protect your heart from people who often prey on others to get their needs met when they're feeling pretty desperate themselves. You can have compassion, you can love them from a safe distance, and at the same time, get on with your own life. You owe it to yourself. And you also need to remember that ultimately they're not going to be happy with the situation if you're not feeling comfortable and safe yourself. Until next time, I'm Beverly Banner Brown wishing you love, healthy love, peace, harmony, joy, and safety in your life. Bye for now.